everyone! If this is your first time joining me, my name is Alex and welcome to my channel. If this is your return visit, thank you so so much for watching my goofy butt again. I know you're really here just to see the puppies. So there's like a hundred million tips that I could give on raising cattle dogs, but I've kind of narrowed it down to 10, which was really, really hard to do. These top 10 tips are almost a tongue twister to say. These are all the things we've done when we've raised our healers. You don't have to follow them to the T. You have to go with what you feel is right for your puppy, but these are just suggestions to try to help you out. Some of these tips are healer specific and some are just basic puppy raising in general. So number 10, train yourself and your family. And what I mean by this is do your research. If you're thinking about getting a healer puppy, definitely talk to other healer parents like me and definitely figure out if they're the right dog for you. Please do not get a healer if you are not willing to go all the way in like to raising it and being its companion for life. If you live with a bunch of people or kids, make sure they're all on the same page on how to train the dog. Make sure your kids know how to behave around a dog, like not smacking it and you know yanking its tail and dragging the dog around the house like by its ears or anything like that. Don't. That's a big no-no. Definitely make sure everybody is on board with bringing home the new baby. Yes, they're babies. And even though a healer is a great family dog, my opinion, I know there's controversy, be aware that they will bond with one person. They are, they will, they will be like, this is my human and I'm picking that person. So make sure the family is aware of that too. Number nine, setting up a kennel. So I'm not sure what the controversy is on, on crate train. Well, maybe it's the word crate training instead of kennel, but setting up a kennel is not a dungeon for your dog. It's not a punishment thing for your dog. A kennel, especially for a young puppy you're bringing home, it's, it's a safe place for them. So it's your first couple nights with your puppy could possibly be very whiny and noisy because they're scared, they don't know where they're at. So setting up a kennel with a bed in there, maybe a couple of toys, that's a nice little safe zone for them. And you can also put them in there for nap time and you can help potty train them with the crate. The kennel's not supposed to be something scary. It's their little safe zone. Dogs naturally have a den, they wanna be in a den, it's their safe zone. And I highly, highly recommend it for your, for your puppy, especially the first six months for a healer. Number eight. Hide the laundry. I'm serious, hide it. Hide all socks, panties, bras, hide it all. <laughs> Cause somehow healers are ninjas at finding the stuff. Like even when I have put away the laundry, hide the laundry if you can. <laughs> Keep your socks, your panties and everything away from it. You're gonna be going through a lot if not. Also just a side note, maybe electrical cords too. I've had two that just seem to love to chew electrical cords and Lucian did it so bad that he actually, we caught him zapping himself with the cords. Number seven, toys. Definitely stock up on a variety of toys when you're bringing home your new puppy. Healers seem to pick out a favorite toy, so you, having a variety, you'll see what the dog likes to play with and what they don't like to play with. I also highly recommend getting herding toys, whether that's a big herding ball or just like a regular just ball that they can go chasing through the yard or wherever. Frisbees are good for healers too. Just get a variety of toys because I've got one healer that loves squeakers more than balls and I've got two that love balls and the other ones don't like them at all like so just give them a variety and then you can see what the puppy likes. Number six, socializing. So healers are naturally leery of strangers so when you're bringing home a puppy between like age of 12 weeks or age of 16 or however old your puppy is this is the best time to try to socialize them but you don't want to overdo it. You want to slowly introduce them to people and new experiences and you want to make sure that they're positive. You don't want to like have a bunch of people around the dog and the dog gets anxious and doesn't know what to do. What we did with our puppies is we actually made sure they were adjusted at home first. So we had maybe like two weeks where it was just us and the puppies so they could get used to how our dog pack works and how our household runs and our routines and stuff like that. And then we actually started setting up like appointments <laughs> with our friends. So friends would come to the house to visit the puppies or we would set up like play dates with friends that had dogs so we could slowly introduce them to other dogs and we would do that at like dog parks or on hiking. But you don't want to throw like too much at the puppy at once but definitely give it some experiences because this is the best time to build positive experiences for the dog and the more positive experiences the dog has now at this age the better it'll be when it's older. And also when you're socializing your dog, socializing doesn't just always meaning like introducing to new people or introducing to other dogs. I mean, that's, that's a huge part of it, obviously, but 
You also want to get the dog used to just going places with you if you choose to have your dog go to, go to places with you. Like just going to the pet store or, you know, driving with you to the bank and the bank teller hands the cookie to the puppy, you know, stuff like that is good socialization, especially for a puppy at a young age. Um, I know we have like a drive through where you can get sodas and stuff and we took the girls there when they were little so they got to have a very short interaction with another human and got a cookie and it was an experience in the car in a strange place and now when we take them for walks they automatically want to go to the drive through because they know that's where the cookies are. Number five, touch. And what I mean by touch is really like pet your puppy. That sounds weird. So what, what I mean by that is like, you know, pet their ears, pet their face, their, their feet. It's gonna really benefit them in the long run. Dogs don't want their feet touched and face when they're puppy. They're like, no, don't touch me. But, and you don't have to do this like all the time, but just sometimes like when you're rubbing their belly or petting their back, maybe sneak in and like pet their paw, pet their ears, touch their face. Maybe run your hand along the back and like just graze their tail. Like this will eventually help later in life. I know people don't think of this or I don't hear many people suggest this, but it's like your dog is going to be examined by a vet, possibly being touched by a groomer, having that positive enforcement of those places already being touched helps the dog. And as a former groomer, I can attest to that, yeah, and vet tech, I, yeah, it's so much easier when a dog is okay with being handled for whether it's exams or for grooming and stuff like that. Can I borrow you for the example? So like when she was little, they hated their heads being touched and their faces, but you know, I can do that to her if I want to. If the vet ever needed to check her teeth, you know, I could do that. But you just want to like, just pet them wherever you can and just, it's not like you're grabbing a paw, like it's just a soft little light touch pet. When they're real, real little, you can do that. And then once they're this age, around a year and seven months, they might get annoyed by it or they might absolutely enjoy it. <laughs> you don't want them to be fearful of being petted or when the vet needs to check things on them. Yeah, look at this sweet babe. It's just something that I've always done and all my dogs are very well behaved when they go to the vet office. They actually don't believe that they're cattle dogs. Apparently there's really bad cattle dogs that show up there, but mine let them do whatever they need done there. Number four, potty training. Be super patient with your puppy. I know it sucks when a dog does a little tinkle or craps everywhere, you know, I mean, it's not fun to clean up, but puppies, when they're that young, cannot hold it. Their bladders are not developed yet fully. As a general rule of thumb for puppies, it's however many months old they are, that's how many hours they can hold it. So if they're two months old, they can only hold it for two hours. If they're three months old, three hours and so forth. Our girls actually started holding around six hours when they were four months old. So it just depends on the puppy. But with healers, I feel like it's really easy to potty train them when they're this young because it's like, you know, as soon as they have nap time, you wake up, take them outside, go potty. As soon as you see them start to squat, you pick them up and take them go outside and potty. And then if you praise them like a crazy idiot while they're outside doing it, they, they pick on it, up on it really, really quick. Earlier when I mentioned the kennel, this is where the kennel comes in handy with the potty training. So be patient. And remember that it's not their fault. I personally do not like puppy pads because when dogs are that young, they kind of sense the feel of what they're about to pee or poop on. So having them pee on the puppy pad, I've seen a lot of dogs later in life pee on like the soft rug in the kitchen or just the area rug or rug in general. Like I just, I don't like puppy pads. I think it reinforces that they can pee and poop in the house. So, I mean, I do, I, I do use them to like line underneath the bed in the kennel, but I, I don't do it for very long. It's just not one of my favorite things to use. I'd rather them just pee on the bed because dogs don't want to pee on their bed in their kennel because then they're like, crap, now I got to sleep in it. So that's just, just, that's just what I do. You can do, you do you. If you want to use puppy pads, use puppy pads. But I personally am against it. I like to do potty training with the kennel and just rushing out side with the dog to make sure they go out that way. Like if you can kind of set up a schedule like for how many hours per month old they are, like if you're like, oh crap, it's been two hours, they probably need to go. I mean, you don't have to do it exactly at two hours, but I would suggest if you're bringing home a two month old puppy, definitely try to do every two hours, go outside and wait outside with them until they do do it. And then, you know, woo, you peed, you know, all that crazy dance stuff. Tip number three, walking. You don't want to over walk your puppy. Puppies sleep a lot. 
puppies get tired a lot, their attention span just kind of, you know, I mean, it's like, it's like a baby. I mean, they just, they're not gonna, they're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, I'm engaged in this. And uh. so when you're taking your puppy for a walk, you know, you want to do short little walks at first. Trust me, once the healer gets to be like six months old, you're, that's the start of the exercise and it just gets more and worse from there on. So when they're that little, enjoy the short little walks. I think we did maybe like 15 minutes. Can't remember exactly, but I know we didn't take them very long. But when you do walk your puppy, definitely make sure it's on some sort of harness or some sort of training collar. And that's up to you which kind you want to use. But definitely something that your puppy will not escape out of because healers see squirrel or cat and bolt and they pull they're known to be pullers on the leash because they're like i don't need no leash i just want to walk with my human but i definitely definitely recommend just making sure some sort of harness or something secure for your puppy because healers want to run and bolt and pull and until you're getting all that training done that's just a nice way to be safe to make sure your puppy doesn't go running off somewhere number two be consistent with training and what I mean by this is don't give in to your cattle dog. <laughs> so easy to do because they're so cute. You're starting to train your cattle dog, especially as a puppy. You want to do like small training sessions. So in our household, what we've always done is make sure they got the basics down. You know, like, you know, going potty, go, go to bed, you know, dinner time, breakfast time. You know, the important things in life, you know, food, sleep, and crapping. So once we got all that stuff down and they actually felt at home with us and we could tell that they were adjusting well that's when we started to do like the sit and the give Paul and all the other little cute little tricks and stuff but we would do like one trick a week or one command a week that way the puppy isn't overwhelmed and the puppy isn't like oh god what do they want from me you know so just doing small training sessions with your puppy and especially with a the healer they pick up on that stuff quick I, I mean I say a week and sometimes they get it within like a day or even two days but we would do like a week consistency of one command and then move on to the other one. Before I get to number one, this one's very, very important. And I was told to do this when I got my two newest girls and I didn't listen. Take pictures. Take as many pictures and video as you can of your puppy and send them to me because I want to see them. I need to set up a Facebook page. I want to see the puppies. It's not that we didn't take pictures or video of the girls, but God, I wish I would have taken so so many more it goes by so fast those first six months and then it's like holy crap the six month mark now it's like here comes extra energy and everything else that comes along with a cattle dog but definitely take pictures and video as much as you can because the time is so so short and it goes by super super fast so number one tip for your healer puppy interact all these dogs want to do is be with you all they want to do is be part of your life and spend time with you yes they need exercise yes they're full of energy but they want to be with you. They want to be a part of your life and a part of your family's life. They don't, they're not the type of dog that you just chain up out, you don't chain up any dog outside all the time, but that's a video for another day. But these dogs thrive on pleasing you and being with you. So interact with your dog all the time, whether it's playing with them, training them, just living your life with them. That is the most important tip I can give for anybody who's getting a healer. Be with the healer. They want to be with you, be with them. And it's really not that hard to have them a part of your life. They will be at your hip, whatever human they choose, and follow you around the whole day throughout the entire house. So, and all they want is just acknowledgement from you and interaction with you. Like while you're cooking, talk to them. Like while you're sitting at your computer, pet them, you know, just stuff like that. This breed worships their human. So interact with them, train with them, play with them, have fun with them, have fun with your puppy. Cause you're gonna have a best friend that you'll never, oh my God, I'm getting emotional. Cause you're gonna have the greatest companion you can ask for in a dog. Once you get through all the crazy puppy stage, remember that's two years. Hopefully some of these tips helped you and I will be making more videos on other tips and more training stuff. So just stick with me, I'm trying to get this done for y'all. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Remember, click all the buttons and I'll see you next time. Hey, boops. <laughs>